Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Craig. So like Deb said, thanks to everybody for uh, being here. Um, I am nervous, by the way. This is my first time doing this. I always tell people uh, that before I worked at Black Hills, I learned uh, a lot of what I know about doing this from Black Hills, like like webcasts and blogs and stuff. So now being the guy here doing it is kind of like, you know, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to do uh, introduction to web application methodology. Um, this is going to be kind of like geared towards people who are maybe considering getting into uh, web app pen testing or pen testing in general. And I'm going to kind of make the case for if you're going to do that, why you should probably maybe consider starting with web apps. Um, and it's going to be a very high level um, methodology focus, not super technical, not in the weeds, probably not going to actually hack anything, explain anything today. Um, so yeah. And the slides, they, I asked for a template and they told me there isn't a template, just do whatever you want. So you get dinosaurs. Um, about me, uh, I studied computer science and computer security as an undergrad with some mathematics. Uh, I wanted to be a doctor, but turns out I'm really bad at chemistry. So I just went back to what I'm good at, which is computers and math. Uh, I graduated 2011, um, wanted to get into security. Uh, things weren't great at the time in 2011, if anybody remembers. Uh, I got some offers, but they weren't really good. So I was like, I'm going to go with the money. So I, I started working as a software developer, um, but I did want to get into security. So I was like, okay, well, how do I go about doing that? So I would do my day job and then, you know, do all the things you want, like home lab stuff at night and kind of like as a hobby almost, right? Uh, eventually made the leap, uh, started doing some red teaming for about an hour or a year. Um, and then I went to Black Hills and I've been here ever since. Uh, they haven't fired me yet. So uh, personally, I, I, I started playing golf in January. I'm terrible, but I love it. Uh, I like football. Um, I used to swim, uh, but yeah. So why this webcast? Uh, and I'm gonna kind of get on a soapbox here um, and I'm gonna actually minimize this. You guys are distracting, but uh, no. so. I, why, why this webcast? Why uh, web apps? Um, it, it's one of those things where in, I, I actually got the numbers uh, today from our folks. Uh, the demand in the industry for web application penetration testing is really high. Uh, we do, I think, more of that than anything else. Um, and it's one of those things where a, a, like everybody's got a network, right? So they're going to be doing you know, regular pen tests, but everybody's got a website too. And we have a lot of clients that have multiple web apps and we have some clients that have a lot of web apps. So it's just, it's, it's a volume thing, right? Um, and they're often externally facing. Um, and a lot, there's kind of a tendency for companies and, and organizations to kind of focus on the external first. So they, they look at that and sometimes like your web app is your business. So it's critical. So it's just, it's the demand is very, very, very high. Um, and I think the barrier to entry for web apps is lower. Um, so if you consider like the broad scope of pen testing, hey, I want to be a pen tester. Uh, you think about like, okay, I got to do externals. I got to do internals, network stuff. I got to do uh, Active Directory, like, like assume compromise type stuff. Uh, they might want me to do wireless. They might want me to do physicals. They might want me to do, do social engineering. That's a, that's a lot. Uh, they might want me to do web apps. Um, web apps though, I think is kind of like a, a more narrow standalone thing. You can get good at web apps and people will hire you just to go do web apps. And you can use that as kind of like a foot in the door. Okay, I'm, I'm getting experience and getting uh, some, maybe some training or, or you know, uh, uh, learning on the job type stuff to branch out from there. Um, I think we've even had people here at Black Hills who basically came in starting as, okay, you do web apps and then we're going to train you to do these other things and you branch out. So I, I think it's, it's one of those things where it kind of, it stands on its own. I, I think it's, it's a very low bar to entry. Um, the, the resources, there are a lot of free uh, and, and uh, very approachable resources out there. And we're going to talk about that. Um, and the other thing is like, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to go figure out, like, do I want to do this? Um, because a lot of people, I, I've known some people that were pen testers that are really good at the whole hacking bit. But if you follow our stuff, you know that that's not the job. The job the product is the report. 
And you can be like a really good hacker and like maybe not so great at reporting and like you don't like doing that. And you're like, this is not for me. Um, and I, I kind of had that same thing uh, happen to me before I got into uh, pen testing. Um, when I wanted to break into security, I was like, okay, what's the, what's the cool fun thing? And it was like right after Stuxnet and I was like reading about that. And I was like, oh man, that's so cool. Uh, I want to be a malware analyst. So I, I was doing all kinds of like reverse engineering, he's crack knees, uh, dynamic malware analysis type stuff. And I was got to the point where I was like, I was getting interviews and stuff. And I realized I really don't want to do this. Like it's, it, it's, it was not for me. Um, and I'd already done a lot of like work and learning and training. And I was like, I just, no, I don't want to do this. So I think that if you're considering pen testing, um, looking at like a narrow slice, like something like web apps and then going through and, and actually doing it and like doing some, doing some, you know, hack knees, vulnerable web apps, and then writing a report uh, is a good way to kind of like figure out, do I want to do this? Is this for me without, you know, learning everything and then getting there and going, oh crap, this sucks, you know? So it's kind of my take on it. Um, and I think the, there's a, there's a kind of a straightforward path and we're going to kind of wrap up the webcast talking about that. Uh, like I said, the, the, there's a lot of free, good resources out there where you can learn this stuff. Um, and the path from going to, through the learning and then saying, oh, I want to apply for a job and get, be a web app pen tester. It, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so we're going to talk about that. This talk is going to be a, a methodology focused, um, not super technical. I, I don't have, I have an hour. I can't teach you everything about how to hack web apps, but like, I want to give you the, like the starting point was like, okay, well, this is how you approach hacking web apps. And then I'm going to point you at like, resources for learning to kind of fill in the gaps later. Uh, so that's what this is. And this is kind of like my short list in order of like how I approach web apps. It's very high level. And this is like, this is it. This is the, this is the framework that I use. Um, I start my, my web app pen test with my report, my methodology, and I've got a skeleton of like things that I know that I'm going to do. And then as I go through them, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure where I, it's like I'm doing my methodology and say, oh, they got this thing. So I'm going to plug that in there too. Um, so we're going to kind of walk through that. Uh, yeah. So without further ado, let's jump right in, right? So I'm basically going to walk you through kind of like how I approach doing a web app pen test. And we're going to use OWASP's uh, Juice Shop vulnerable web app, which I have running. And we're going to use Burp Suite. I, I like to be kind of like technology and tool agnostic, but the truth is that Burp Suite is the industry standard. It's really good. Uh, Port Swigger is really good. And they got a lot of really good stuff. So like shameless, like I, it is what it is. It's Burp Suite is good. Um, so we're going to do Burp Suite. And we're gonna launch that. So uh, this is another kind of like a nuanced thing. So I, I test with Firefox um, and I like to run it from the command line because I like to do this and it's gonna be, I'm gonna kind of show you kind of later when we get the uh, access controls, why I wanna do this because this no remote means that when I launch Firefox, it's gonna be its own separate instance. So if I, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna launch two of them. And they're going to be completely separate. They're not going to share like data, cookies, any of that stuff. We want them to be isolated because when we do some stuff later, that's going to come into play. Uh, the, the dash P basically just says, I'm going to select a profile. And I've created a couple of those. Well, it's actually the same profile twice, uh, but it's primary, secondary. And secondary. And so now I've got, if it ever opens, there it goes. So now I've got two instances of Firefox that are running and they're completely separate. We can minimize this one for now. Um, and these profiles, I've, I've, I've made some changes to them and a lot of it's cosmetic. Uh, and some of it's kind of functional and practical. So Firefox by default is really, really noisy. Um, Brian King BB, uh, has a really good blog post out there about how to make it less noisy. So I've done that. Um, I've got some, uh, extensions that I like to use. Uh, so we got your cookie editor. Um, I'm probably not going to mess with that today. 
uh, got Wappalizer and we got Foxy Proxy, which basically is just pointing um, my web browser to Burp Suite. So oh, my project. And there's some other things in here that are like UI things, um, like uh, when we're doing reporting and you guys know how important that is. Yeah, of course, because it's not running yet. But uh, there, there's things like it'll it'll actually show the entire URL and stuff like that. Um, I wish this would go faster. And there we go. All right, so this is your starting point, right? You're like, okay, cool. I got my browser set up. It's all good to go. Um, I'm proxying through Burp Suite, which you can see over here. And it's like, okay, well, now what? Um, first thing that I like to do uh, is uh, I do host scanning. So you've got your scope, you've got your web app. So say the customer is Juice Shop and they're like, hey, we got this web app, it's Juice Shop whatever this is locally so but this is your this is your scope um one of the first things i'm going to do is is look at the host itself so um i'll do an nmap scan uh i'm not going to do that because it's local and I, it wouldn't make sense to do here but uh basically just scan for looking for other services you would expect to just be able to see the web server uh but occasionally you see some other stuff that may or may not be intentionally uh, exposed so just a high level just see what's there right um also run uh, nicto uh, so we can do that. And I mean, Nikto is is a web server vulnerability scanner. Um, it, it's they keep it pretty well updated. It's, it's something that I just do, and it doesn't. I, I don't usually find a whole lot of good stuff with it, um, but. Because it's a vulnerable web app by intention, this is going to light up like a Christmas tree in a second. But this is just very high level, like without even like touching the app yet, just see like what could I possibly see, you know? And yeah, it's finding all kinds of stuff, right? So, uh, and, and some people might see a theme here. Uh, like if you're familiar with like regular penetration testing type stuff, or if you ever try to like study or go for OSCP, uh, a lot of a lot of the advice you'll get is like enumerate, 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 right? And that's true with web apps too. You, you have to like look at everything and then like find out what's there. So we're doing the vulnerability scan. Um, I, I canceled that because it's going to be uh, real bad. We're not going to dig into that. So uh, look to look at your services. Say, hey, why is this got a database exposed too? Like, should I poke at that? Um, you guys intend to have this exposed, but uh, from there, so we're also in here. Um, like I said, we're proxying. And uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to find out uh, like what technology um, the, the application is using. And that's going to help you uh, as we talk about uh, extensions and things like that, um, which I'll show you uh, the Burp App Store. So a lot of these things are, are very um, technology specific. So when you look here, we're going to look at Wappalizer, which I heard there's some drama involved with that rip wapalizer occasionally. Um, you're going to look at this, and, and this is going to kind of guide you on like, okay, what what do I want to maybe try in addition to my normal methodology, right? So uh, the thing that jumps out to me here is Angular, um, and if I see Angular, I'm going to try uh, template client side template injection, which is kind of like it, it's similar to cross site scripting, but it's specific to Angular, right? Uh, and really, the idea is to like figure out what it is that you're testing because when you go into the Burp App Store, like a lot of these things are uh, technology dependent. Like I'm not going to do like J2EE, which is a Java enterprise like scanner, if it's not a Java application, right? Um, and I'm going to do I'm going to sort these. This is actually uh, my lazy trick to finding cool Burp extensions. Um, sort by the rating and popularity. And you're going to see stuff up here, like all the ones up here at the top um, are highly rated and very popular because they're really useful and good extensions. Um, 
but so it that's kind of and there's a sort my name so in addition to like wapalizer uh you can also use some other burp stuff to look at your software so i think the software version finder is another good one for um yeah software version report is another one that will kind of tell you what technology the application is running so just in case wapalizer goes away one day uh that's another thing you can do you can also use your you know the old mark one eyeball and like look at your stuff and uh, like I had one where it was a, it was a, it was a WordPress app and none of the stuff that I was looking at actually reported that it was WordPress, but then I would look at the actual URLs and I saw there were some UR, uh, WordPress URLs and I was like, oh, well, probably a WordPress app. And then that's, that's none of those things where you identify the technology and then you say, okay, well, it's a WordPress app. So I'm going to use like, uh, WordPress scanner and, and I'm going to do the, like my WordPress methodology on this app because I noticed that it's WordPress. Um, so yeah that's that's technology fingerprinting that's kind of like one of the first things you want to do is figure out what it is that you're dealing with um and the next thing that i always do uh is i start my um content discovery so okay you, you figure out what technology it's running whatever you also want to know like what does this thing have um what what is this application what are its parts um all that good stuff so i refresh here's my my root and there's a few ways to do this. Um, I think the old school way that a lot of people maybe are familiar with is like uh, like Durbuster and stuff like that. Um, Burp Suite's got built in their, uh, their content discovery tool. And I, I pretty much start with this. Um, it's pretty flexible. Basically, pick your request, open this thing up, and you can configure it. And so this is my URL. Sometimes if you got like an extension here, you just delete that because uh, you want to start at the, the application root. And basically what it does is it will, um, it'll spider linked content. So anything, anything that's in here, uh, like, like this is a link, uh, this is a link. It'll, it'll go through all these links like recursively and, and go spider the application. It'll also do directory brute forcing. So it'll look for um, uh, kind of like what Dur Durbuster would do, where it kind of looks for you know application directories or files that could be there. Um, you can customize that. You can change your extensions that you want to include, or exclude. Um, you can add your your custom file, and this is a Seclists on GitHub. If you just Google Seclists GitHub, they've got a lot of really good word lists for uh, looking at web applications. And so my favorite are the raft lists. So I'm going to pick the raft medium files and the raft medium directories. And basically it's going to add these directories and files to the directory and file brute force. And you can also we'll do, we'll do 10 of those. Why not? I mean, that's, that's pretty much how I do it. And then you just come over here and you click the button. Oh, I didn't set my scope. Uh, it's not important for this, but so uh, we'll go ahead and do that here in a second. But one thing you can do is uh, in Burp Suite is set the scope for your, uh, your test. Um, and going out of scope when you're pen testing is bad. So it, it's a good idea to go ahead and set your scope. But yeah, so I, yeah, I know it's out. I didn't set the scopes out of scope, so I'm gonna go ahead and run it. And like I said, this thing is going through, and I am capturing flags just by doing this, right? So it's it's spidering the linked content, and it's brute forcing directories and uh, and files, and it's going. And you see, it's it's not super fast, um, but it, it goes. Uh, and so, and you can look over here, expand. Right, and this is all the stuff that it's finding, and the idea here is that linked content is important. You like it. if you do your manual enumeration, which we're going to talk about next. I always like to start this first. Linked content is important, but what we're actually really interested in is stuff that's out there on the web app that's not linked. So uh, directories and, and files that are out there that it's serving up that are not actually linked in the application, probably not. It's probably important stuff. It's something you want to look at. Um, so this thing is running 
So we're doing our, our content discovery. And the other thing I do is like, once I get that going, I've done my host scanning, I've done my technology fingerprinting, I'm looking for content. Now it's like, okay, well, now let's look at the application. So it, I do manual enumeration and I really, it's just me uh, coming in and clicking through everything. Like I, I'm clicking through everything in this just to see, see what's there. And, and I'm, looking, I'm looking for paths, I'm looking for really like what all is here. Um, just to get a feel for kind of like what the app is. And yeah, so once you're, once you're familiar with the application and, and full disclosure, I, I've played around with Juice Shop a little bit before, but like I've not done a full run. I don't know what's in this thing. I know there's a bunch of bad stuff, but like I'm kind of going here blind, but the, because this is a methodology, this is raw, this is a methodology focus. I don't know what I'm going to find in here. Uh, yeah, you just click through. Oh, we got, we got an account. We, we can log in. Uh, and, and just poke around, see what all's in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in. I did look up what the credentials are for the regular user here. So spoiler alert, um, you can log in with this guy. And so we're going to log in. One thing I like to look at when I log in is like, what, I don't know. What the, what the actual authentication process looks like uh, in terms of this right here, right? Is setting setting session tokens and things like that. Like when I enter my username and password, what does the application give me back? Because that's gonna give me an indication of what valid sessions you use to stay valid and, and be authenticated, right? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm logged in now. Uh, I think I can go to my profile here. And I like doing that because that gives me a baseline. Uh, I'm authenticated. I'm looking at my profile. That's typically going to be um, privileged information or a privileged request, which means you've got to be logged in and authenticated as the right person to access that. Um, and that kind of thing is useful when we start looking at access controls and things like that. It's running really slow, which is a concern, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm in here, uh, I've done my, let's, let's pretend I actually clicked through everything and I have an idea of like what the application is. Um, and I'm now comfortable, I got to lay the land. I know that technology uh, burp suite is hopefully uh, identifying anything in, like useful, like this one right here, this is something I'm gonna, I'm gonna latch onto immediately, right? Um, I'm coming here, look at, oh, what's, what's admin? Like, is that something that I wanna look at in, the answer is probably yeah. That's that's a that is something of interest, um, but for the sake of the lag, we're just going to stop that. Yeah, we're going to close that. All right. So you, you you've done your manual enumeration. You've done your technology fingerprinting. You've done your content discovery. Okay, this is my attack service. This is the app. I, I got a pretty good idea of like what I'm dealing with here. Um, Next, I'm going to scan and fuzz. Um, and so I'm going to go to my targets thing. And where is Juice Shop? HIJ, here we go. Um, I'm going to use the Burp Suite scanner. It's really this straightforward, this easy. Um, this is the scanner face. They kind of updated this recently. I like it a lot better now because you basically you select your target, send to the scanner. And then you've got these things. You can you can uh, configure credentials. So if you want to do an authenticated scan, I can add those uh, login credentials that I that I just used. Uh, we're not going to mess with that though. It's got different types of scans, um, and I like to do my manual enumeration before I do this because depending on the size of the application is going to determine which one of these that I want to do um, because. If I do deep and it's like an enormous application with thousands of directories, it's going to take forever. I, if I have a week for a test, I'm not going to get finished. So I might want to do something that's lightweight or fast or, or balanced, depending on kind of the, the scope, right? But we'll go ahead and we'll do a deep one. Click OK. And yeah, so it's it's running a vulnerability scan against this thing. And we're going to see some confetti down here, hopefully, in, in a bit. But uh, so you go back to your dashboard, you see all of your running jobs. Um, and this is the one that we just started. 
Oh man, Juice Shop is really, really, really struggling to do this, but you get the idea. Uh, basically, it's running a vulnerability scan, um, and it's 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 checking for all the stuff that you would expect. Yeah, see, we we hacked something. Um, it's checking for all the stuff you would expect, so like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, uh, command injection, like all all that stuff, and basically anywhere in this application that's got parameters. This thing is basically spidering and, and just injecting payloads in all of these places, right? Um, it's pretty good. Uh, some people will say that there are things about other tools that are better, but I mean, this is pretty good. And combine, combining this with like, like I mentioned earlier, like the technology for fingerprinting is so important because this isn't necessarily going to be looking for everything, right? So like we, I mentioned Angular and the client side template injection. It's not going to try that. So that's something that I want to identify so I can do manually in addition to this, right? Uh, or like some, something like log for uh, log for J, right? It's not going to do log for J scanning. So if I see that based on the technology, like I want to look at log for J, I'm going to just add that to my list of things to go check manually, right? Um, but yeah, the burp suite scanner is pretty good. Uh, the same thing comes into play. I mentioned that you want to you want to select the scan that's most appropriate for the size and scope of your application. Um, Sometimes even that it's just it's too much, and it's gonna cry. And it's like I only have a week. Uh, you can do manual injection points too, which I think is uh, pretty pretty useful. Um, so let's take uh, let's take this request right here. It's got parameters. It's got some stuff in here. Um, I don't want to say the the scan of the whole application is taking too long. I I'm doing my manual testing now. I'm walking to the application. Uh, I see this one it looks interesting. Let's uh, let's scan it specifically. And so you right click in here, you can send it to Intruder. And Intruder is a pretty powerful tool. And we're not gonna actually probably showcase a lot of what it can do. Um, but one thing you can do is here, you can, you can select the injection points. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto so that it goes ahead and it highlights and selects all these green blocks are places where it's selecting that as a payload positions. And instead of doing an intruder thing right here, what we're actually gonna do, and I don't wanna, I don't care about that one. So I'm gonna say, I'm really interested in these fields right here. I wanna fuzz those. And you right click and you can scan define insertion points. And basically what it does, it's, it's doing the same thing you do with the scanner, but instead of like crawling the entire application of all the discovered content and, it's, and scanning and fuzzing every different field, it's only gonna scan the ones that I've picked. The ones that I'm interested in here in this request, and so we'll get, go ahead and launch that. And uh, yeah, see, it's it's now fuzzing just those three fields that I gave it. And you can see here, Burp Suite is finding stuff, and I'm going to sort by the stuff that I care about. And it really hasn't found anything cool yet. Um, but the idea here is like, okay, you, you've done your scanning, you're doing your manual enumeration, you're doing some of your manual testing by hand uh, while this is running, and it's coming up with these results. And I, I use that as a starting point. You're going to get a lot of false positives. And I mean, that's that's the job, right? You run the scanner, it comes, hey, you got all these problems. And then I would go through here and, you know, read about it, figure out, you know, what part of the request is actually, no, it doesn't actually have anything on that one. Uh, it, it'll highlight um, the interesting parts. Like it sometimes, if, if it finds something, uh, like say, say for instance, if it was a cross-site scripting vulnerability that it says that it found, you, you can go into this request and just click this little thing, and it'll it'll have highlighted the part of the request that has the payload. And so you can take that and say, okay, this is what I want. Let's go replay this. Let's go do it manually and verify that this vulnerability exists or that it doesn't exist. And Burp is just kind of like, err. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that's scanning and fuzzing. Uh, there are some other things that I'll do um, in addition to running these things. Like there are, we talked about Seclus earlier for content discovery. They also have some payloads in there that are really cool. So they got the, uh, I like the, the polyglot payloads, which are basically, um, they're, they're injection payloads like SQL injection or cross-site scripting payloads that are um, formed in such a way that they are going to, uh, hopefully get through any kind of like a uh, language or, or backend conversions that go on in the application. Um, and so I'll, I'll do payloads like that. Um, 
as well. And yeah, that's that's scanning and fuzzing. I mean, that's that's kind of like the the things that people are interested in in terms of like finding vulnerabilities. But let's move on to so once I've got the scans running, like it, I'll move on to more of my manual process for um, testing. And so the next thing on the list after scanning and fuzzing, I have uh, authentication and session session management, uh, which we talked about that earlier. Where I, let's say I was watching the login process, I'm trying to get an idea of like okay, how are sessions like created and, and managed and maintained? Um, so we'll go ahead and log out. And we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll walk through that again here real quick. Um, and I, I've got kind of a checklist for things that I'm gonna look at for authentication and session management. And one of the first things is username enumeration. So you wanna be able to tell uh, if, a bad guy can look at your application and figure out what the valid usernames are. Um, so we know this is a valid username. This is the one that's configured and a uh, fake password. We're going to give it an intentionally bad password. So if the bad guys can identify which users do and do not exist in your application, that can give them a, uh, an opportunity to do a more targeted attack for like credential stuff and your password spring. And we're going to go ahead and try to log in. Uh, bad password, of course, it failed. But what I'm looking for here is I know this account exists. And I know that I gave it a bad password, but I'm looking for um, things that will give away in the response whether or not uh, I can identify if this user exists. So this is a response. It looks pretty straightforward. I, I'm probably not going to find anything here, but I am going to send it to Burp Suits Comparer tool, which is my, my kind of go to for doing this. Um, it's like, okay, that's, that's in compare. Let's try, uh, another one. So we tried the user that we know exists. Now we're going to try a user that I mean, hopefully doesn't exist. Right. Uh, and we're gonna try to log in with them with a, obviously a bad password. And so we got this request up here. Yeah. It looks like kind of the same thing, but I'm going to go ahead and send that to compare too. Uh, now that I've got these things both in compare and it, it was the the responses are what I was sending, right? Because I care about what the, the application is giving me back. And you can go in here and compare the responses and it'll highlight anything interesting. And what you're looking for here are differences and discrepancies. So if this were to have like different text down here, then I would know that the application responds differently to invalid logins for um, accounts based on whether or not they exist. And right now it doesn't look like there's anything. The only thing that's different is the timestamp. So, okay, methodology checkbox, uh, not, not, a new, not a username enumeration vulnerability, we're good to go. Uh, and you go ahead and repeat that process like with other things. So uh, account creation is usually a good one. Uh, password recovery, looks like this application has that. You do the kind of the same process here and and do, do the same process and just see, is there any way that I can identify valid usernames in this application? So we're now gonna actually log in. And, and again, I, I wanna, I just wanna kinda get, get a feel for like, okay, what, what are sessions in this application? Like, what is it doing? It's doing a bunch of stuff, but yep, here's my here's my login. And a lot of times when you authenticate through an application, it'll set a bunch of stuff. Um, and usually we don't care about most of it. Um, so okay, I logged in. It gave me okay. It set this authentication token. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That's probably your authentication session token. Um, it's not always that straightforward. And we're gonna I'm gonna walk through kind of like how to identify that. So, okay, I'm logged in. Looks like this is my authentication token. Let's verify that. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna make a privileged request. So something that's privileged request is like, okay, you've gotta be the right person uh, to do this thing. Otherwise, hopefully the application is gonna tell you no. Um, so a good one, if any kind of application that has like a, a user profile, like I can go in and change my account settings or whatever, that's kind of like my go-to one to check for privilege requests. So we've got that here. Uh, so I'm going to go to my safe search account 
And yeah, so this request for my profile is a privilege request. Um, uh, no, it's cache, whatever. And what I'll do here is I want to identify what parts of the uh, request actually matter for this to be a successful privilege request. So I'm gonna send this to Burp Suite's repeater. And repeater is kind of cool because you can just replay requests. Um, right? Man, I really wish that wasn't cache. That's, that's really annoying. Uh, but it's working. It, it's, we know that it worked because it showed me the profile and I'm replaying it and it's, it, yeah, it's still there. It's the same thing. I would love to have been able to, let's do, let's actually do a different request. I want to show this. I think we've got a shopping cart. This would be another one that we would identify as a privilege request, right? Looking at your shopping cart. So let's go ahead and, oh my gosh. Yeah, well, whatever. This is what I get for doing like a live demo. But the point is you can replay request, privilege request, it's succeeding. Um, I wanna identify which of these things down here in this request matter. And I'm assuming that the token is gonna be the one thing that matters. Um, but let's find out. I'm going to remove all this stuff. You can just do that and run it again. Looks like it still works. Uh, what if I actually we won't do that. We'll just take it out. Let's see. Is this important? Yeah, turns out that was pretty important. Um, it, it didn't like not having that thing. So that's probably my, my session token, right? And I can back up and replay it with it. It's all Gucci. Um, so we've identified this as our session token. And uh, how much time we got? Oh, yeah, I got plenty of time. So one of the other things that I like to do is once I've identified this thing, it's like, okay, let's figure out what parts of this are actually important, right? Um, and I can tell just by looking at it, it's a JSON web token, but that's not that, that's not important. So what parts of this thing are important? Like if I delete that, right? Just one character, get rid of it it fails. So that, that character was important. So I want to identify, are all of these important? Are, are just some of them important? Like, what can I get away with here as an attacker? And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to send this to Burp Suite's intruder. Here's my request in intruder. And I'm going to select the token value as my uh, insertion point. And I'm going to do sniper. So I'm only going to do just this, just going to rub through it. And I'm going to configure the payload to be the character frogger. And basically what this thing does, is it will replay the request that I sent it. And for the payload position, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a change to each character uh, in that payload position. Just, just, one, just like one ASCII character difference and replay the request. And then I can look at it and see, OK, well, did it fail or not and do the comparison. So. Uh, and I'll, I'll, that'll make more sense when I do it, which I'll go ahead and do that. And you see like it changed the, this first one, it changed the F, the E to an F, right? And the second one, it changed the Y to a Z. And this one, it changed the J to a K, right? And it's basically just replaying this thing with, with all these different characters. And I'm looking at these responses. Well, when I change the J to a K, the response says that it failed. So that J was necessary for this to be successful. And it's gonna take forever, but really you're just looking at the responses, you're trying to identify like what parts of this token are actually being correctly validated by the application. And because of the JWT, like changing any of them is, is gonna make it fail. So these are all gonna be 500 error codes and it doesn't like any of this. Um, spoiler, we're not gonna wait for this finish. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna check all of them. <laughs> Probably, but that's what you would be looking for there. Um, another thing I like to do, and I think this one is actually, if I remember correctly from when I did this before, this one actually is a finding in this tool. So um, I'm gonna check for if sessions are properly invalidated when I log out. And there's a lot of applications where they, they don't. So this is my privilege request. Uh, hey, I wanna look at my profile. Am I allowed to do that? Yeah, sure, because you're logged in. Okay, here's my profile. Yeah, it's all good. 
Send a repeater. Replay it. All good. Now, what happens if I log out of the application? Right? So if I can actually get to my logout button. Okay, I'm logged in. What if I what if I log out? Uh, yeah, I'm logged out. Uh, I, I'm no longer authenticated to the application. This privilege request should fail because I'm no longer authenticated and that session should have been destroyed. But, oh no. But it's working, right? This should not happen. This is a finding. So at this point in my methodology, I'm clicking that button, I'm taking a screenshot, right? I, I'm saying, hey, I, I logged out of this application and I, I just replayed this privilege request and it's, it's giving me what I want. That's probably not good. So again, that's just one more thing that I check. Um, trying to think authentication session management. Yeah, that's that, that's kind of the methodology. It's kind of the, the checklist of things that I look for. Uh, the next thing on my list are access controls. And I like to do those after authentication session management because part of access controls is knowing what makes a valid session. Um, and, oh man. So let's log in again. as our low privilege user. All right, we're authenticated. Um, let's go ahead and make that privilege request. And I'm going to, we know this is our session token. I'm gonna to go ahead and grab this guy. And now what I wanna do is I wanna test um, access controls. And there, there's kind of two kind of cat main categories of access control vulnerabilities. You've got your, your horizontal access control vulnerabilities and your vertical horizontal uh, vertical access control vulnerabilities. So horizontal is like, um, hey, I'm a, I'm a user on this application. I'm authenticated. I can request my own profile. Um, but if I request uh, like Deb's profile, I shouldn't be able to get her profile back. If I can get her profile back when I request it, while I'm authenticated as me, then that's a, a horizontal access control vulnerability. Um, vertical is like, if I'm a regular user, like I'm, I'm Mr. McSafe search here. Um, if I make a request for an administrative function, um, like, a, like a power user type request that is only allowed for them to do, and I can do that as a Mr. Low Privilege guy, um, then that's a, a vertical like access control vulnerability, right? Um, remember when we talked about uh, Firefox and our profiles, that's where this comes into play. So I'm logged in with Mr. McSafe search here. I also wanna log in with an administrative user in this completely separate, completely separate, uh, browser. So these things don't share cookies, anything across them, right? So I can go to the application eventually. Oh no. What is this? And there we go. And you can see in my separate instance of Firefox, click this, I'm not authenticated. Um, so that's all working great, but I am going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to log in as the admin user here, right? So this is a, uh, an admin for the application. It's a power user. He's got more privileges and abilities than Mr. McSafe search over here, right? And, oh yeah, new confetti. And so what I'm going to do here to test access controls is I'm going to take the session token from this guy, which I've copied here. And we're going to load a burp suite extension that is one of my favorites. Uh, Autorize, and it's actually installed. So you, you, the way you do these, like I said, 
sort by the cool ones. And then that's how you look. Uh, and also look by whatever I did, technology you've identified. But so Autorize is one of the ones that I like to use a lot. Um, this thing's installed. We go over here to the Autorize tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to configure this thing. What Autorize does is when you enable it, it will, for every request you make in the application, it's going to replay that request twice, but a little differently. Um, it's going to replay the same request with whatever credentials you configure it, right? So we identified that our session token is this guy, and we're just gonna give that to Autorize. And so now when I turn it on, it's gonna, and I browse the application, it's gonna replay every request that I make. Like, so it's gonna play the, the original request, the one that I actually do, then it's gonna replay it with this guy's token, and it's gonna replay it without any token. And the idea is that you can look at the results and say, okay, well, should this, low privilege users account been able to make this request and should an unauthenticated user be able to make that request and i'll show you that here in a second so low privilege users token is in here good to go Autorize is on and now i'm going to browse the application as the admin so we got mr admin over here and yeah let's go look at my profile admin profile and you see the autorize so profile uh, here's my original request this is me as the admin asking for the admin's account and it worked um, this is my modified request this is my request with the low privilege user session token and oh man it looks like it worked well did it though and the answer is short story on this one. No, it, it did because all I asked for was my profile and this user does have a profile. And so it gave me this user's profile. If you're not sure about that, you can do the same trick we did earlier. Um, send this to compare, send this to compare, compare those things and, and see if there's any differences. Like if, if it returned the right profile, then you're good. If it returned the admin's profile, then that's bad. Um, this guy should not be getting anything back. This should be a failure. This is all unauthenticated and the answer is yes, this failed. So everything's Gucci, this looks like it's fine. Um, let's do some other stuff. And you're just gonna browse the application as this high privilege user and, and watch these. And this is contrived because uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of time, but I know for a fact that there is a vulnerability that's an access control vulnerability in this application. Uh, and we're gonna go find it. if it ever loads. Hmm. So looking at my profile didn't have an access control vulnerability, but let's try if we do some other stuff. Let's go and buy some fruit. I don't even know if that's working. Okay, yeah, no, it's working. I'm just, I'm, I'm doing my thing and it's, it's replaying these requests. Uh, but let's, like, let's go look at my basket. All right. So let's look at these things. Um, and what I'm looking for here is it looks like this is indexed by this number right here. And this is me looking at my basket and this is me getting back all the stuff that I put in my basket, right? And this is the original, what I expect. Why is this stuff up here, right? This is the, the low privilege user basically looking at the admin user's basket, right? This guy, yeah, I don't know if I can look at it too. Um, I, this is a vulnerability, right? I, I'm having trouble thinking of how to explain this, but the idea is like, this is me looking at my basket, uh, my basket.
I'm just I'm just waiting for it to load. That's not doing it. Oh well, uh, live demo fail. Believe me, believe me, this is a vulnerability. <laughs> this is me going, hey, I want to look at my basket. This is my admin basket, and I'm the admin. That's all cool. Um, the API, the API call on the back end here that makes this request is how it actually loads the data for this basket. But anybody can make that request and get the data for this basket, which is presumably sensitive. So, long story short, that's an access control vulnerability. Uh, this is authorized. That's how you identify and find them. It makes things a lot easier because otherwise you'd have to manually um, go make these requests by hand in the other browser. And especially like in this case, it, it's, it's actually a really good example because the, the request isn't just me visiting the basket. It's the API request on the back end that actually gets the data for the basket. So I'm not even sure I would like even think to do that manually, but Autorize takes care of that for us and replays those automatically. So um, that's that. Uh, there's some other things. That's uh, access controls, uh, cryptography. Um, this is on localhost and it's not HTTPS. So I'm not going to mess with this app, but like uh, for testing like your SSL implementations, I like to use test SSL. Uh, just Google uh, GitHub test SSL, you'll find it. Um, and we're going to do Google. We'll do Google, they won't mind. And really, I'm just going to run this thing. And what it does is it evaluates the SSL certificates for the application. And this flag, just this is my output flag. And basically, it's going to give me a, a, a nice little HTML report when it finishes. Um, and here it goes. It's running. And you'll see it's going to check for like uh, whatever protocols and ciphers this thing uses and offers. Um, all bad Google deprecated TLS uh, protocols. And it'll look for other like, vul like vulnerabilities and weaknesses in the, test in the SSL implementation. And it's important, I mean, uh, actually exploiting like a, an SSL TLS like weakness or vulnerability is like pretty much always gonna be outside of the scope of what I'm gonna do on, on really any pen test, but you wanna be able to identify it. Uh, and this is just a really nifty tool for doing it. Um, there's some other tools that you can do. Um, I can't remember the like SSL apps maybe, um, but they're like public public website web apps where like you can give them a URL and it'll go do this for you and it'll give you like a nice little report card. Um, I don't like doing that because it's it's kind of like um, I'm kind of doxing my customer, right? I just gave this third party company like the URL for this app that I'm testing. Like why would I do that? Um, and also, not all the apps that you're going to be testing are going to be external. Like sometimes you have to. It's an internal application, so you got to you got to tunnel in and then this. Uh, SSL Labs isn't going to be able to see that thing as it's inside, but with this tool, you can take it with you into the network and run it there and you can do the same thing, right? So that's why I prefer this uh, and the output's nicer, gives you a nice little HTML report, but that's that. And I mean, honestly, that's my methodology. Like I'm at the end of my checklist. Like uh, there are some other things that I will mix and match. Like I said, it's very much a choose your own adventure. So, um, uh, what's one that I want to do? Yeah, I, I think this thing has an upload. Yeah, so like this. So this is one where as I'm doing my manual enumeration, I'm going through the application. Um, I see that there's a file upload, right? right? So I can, I can do, uh, I can update my, I think it's my, uh, my picture. And so file uploads are one of those things where as soon as I see that, actually, I don't even care, uh, images. I've got, yeah, a blank white image that I like to use for this kind of testing. So select that, upload this. Um, file uploads are another injection attack vector, right? So that's my upload request. Go to my proxy. And this is one of those things where as soon as I identify this, I'm like, okay, that's a piece of my methodology that I'm now going to implement and add because I found that it's got this capability. So here it is. This is my image file upload. And I'm going to use... Uh, oh, I don't have it installed. Something that I know about that is a burp extension that's really cool, and it's the upload scanner. And you can read about this. Basically, this thing will replay your upload request. This guy, 
And then all this content, all the stuff that's part of your file upload, it's going to take that request and it's going to start like fuzzing and scanning it, right? And this is something that the regular burp scanner wouldn't do. It doesn't, it doesn't do this stuff. So it's not until I identify the file upload that I'm actually going to try this. So I found it. Uh, is this thing? Okay, upload scanner is installed. And how we're going to do this is we're going to right-click extensions, upload scanner. There's supposed to be text there that says send to upload scanner, but it looks like it's broken. But I'm going to click it and trust it. And it worked. So it sent my upload request to the upload scanner. And it's configurable. There's one that you always want to do. This one right here. Check that bad boy. Because when I run this thing, what it'll do is it'll actually, this it has this done uploads tab. It'll show me all the upload requests here. Um, if you don't check that, then it won't. And then you don't know exactly what it is that worked or didn't work when stuff happens later. So got that. Why is this? Um, I love this extension, but it's also kind of janky. Uh, it's not working. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I don't know why anybody writes anything in Java. No, it's a mistake. Well, shoot. Uh, yeah, I can't demo this because uh, I lost the part of the UI that allows me to actually launch the scan. Um, I'll talk about it though. <laughs> so like I said, what this will do is it will, there's a button that says run it and it'll, it'll replay the upload request and it'll put a bunch of payloads in there and it'll look at the responses and if it finds an indication of a vulnerability, it'll report it on your dashboard. Um, and it's all, it's all great. Uh, it finds stuff. I found a, I found a cross-site scripting recently with a file upload uh, using this technique like a couple weeks ago. So it, it, it's janky, but it does work and it finds cool stuff. Uh, believe me, when you're, when you're running it, the uploads, if you check that box, they'll show up here and you can go and look at them like we normally would. Um, there's another thing, uh, something that I think is kind of a nuance that I wish that I could show you, um, but unfortunately this thing's broken. This thing has the ability to also request the file that you uploaded and re-download it if that's how the application works. Um, so let's say in this case, like the, the use case is I'm uploading my image, right? My, my user profile picture, which it looks like it worked. Um, oh, I see Brian, is that my buzzer? I got two minutes, I got two minutes. We're gonna talk about this and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it down. Um, you can configure it to automatically request this image back once it's already, once it's been uploaded and it'll do that automatically. And that's important because for some of these image like file upload payloads, they don't get triggered until you access the thing you uploaded later. So if you're looking at the traffic and I wish I could show you and you can see a way where you can find where the image is uploaded to, you can tell it to go grab that thing too. And that'll help you fire some of these payloads that, uh, that are out there. So I'm out of time. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. So uh, that's my methodology. That's it. That's how I do things. Like that's pretty much it. Um, how, how do you go from this kind of like starting block point of like, this is my methodology. This is my process. This is how I approach things to, okay, actually being able to do it. And the answer is like, it's a lot easier than it used to be. Uh, there are a lot of really, really good free resources out there. OWASP is great. They're the ones who made that app that I was just hacking on. Uh, Port Swigger, the people that make Burp Suite have the Port Swigger Academy. It is super badass. Uh, it's my go-to resource. If I'm on a web app and like, I don't remember how to do this, or I haven't seen this before. Uh, I, I go, Hey, Port Swigger, you guys have a lab for this? Um, they have, they've got you know, lots of stuff you can read. They've got labs you can go hands-on do stuff. Uh, if you're a visual, like you need somebody to show you how to do it. They, they've got the community um, cont contributors, like people have like done these labs and solved them, like upload these cool little videos that show you how to do it. Um, and that's, I, I'm a cheater. So I'm like, oh, hey, I've never tested OAuth before. Let's go to the OAuth lab and skip to the video. And then this person's going to show me how to test OAuth and go from there. Uh, and then when that fails, I just bug BB and have him tell me how to do it. But got it. Thanks. I, two more minutes. Two more minutes. I'm almost done. I'm wrapping it up. You um, got it. Use two minutes. We'll be quiet. So I got hair on my mouth. Thanks, Deb. You're but uh, 
Yeah, so other resources, blogs, webcasts, stuff like this. Uh, there's lots of stuff out there. A lot of bug bounty guys are, are like a show off and, and they do some really interesting stuff on like YouTube and Twitch and, and they stream. And I, I, I watch that kind of stuff because those guys are like wicked smart. Um, and bug bounty disclosures is another one that I like to read occasionally. Uh, Hacker one is my favorite because like these bug bounty guys are doing like really cool stuff against like big companies on like very public. And a lot of times once they've remediated the vulnerabilities, they'll allow these guys to publish what they did and you can go read like what what they did to find this really cool thing and got like all this money you know so and then if it's, if it's something that you can like, apply to your own methodology and your own process and your own testing then it's like just throw it in the bag so i like doing that um and the path forward so uh it, you start with this methodology a starting point and then you go do the the port swigger labs and you learn how to do all the actual technical hacker stuff like exploiting the vulnerabilities in the web apps yada 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 and then like, okay, how do you go from there to like, hey, I want to do this. I, I want to get a job doing this. And the answer is just do it. Like do what I just did, like get this vulnerable web application, go hack it, and then write a report about it. You can get uh, pen test report templates like on online, just go Google them, they're out there. Uh, go go do your learning, go do your, your practice on this web app, then like write it up. Like like say, hey, this is this is how I did this and, and what that gives you is not only have you developed your skill set and learned how to do stuff, and now you've got like a writing sample. You can say, you can go to a company and apply for a job and be like, hey, I'm a web app pen tester, and here's an example of me doing the job, and this is how I can write, and this is the actual product you're going to get from me. And employers like that. That's a really good idea. So do that. Show your work. Um, Port Swigger's got a certification. I haven't taken it. I've heard good things. It's, a, it's very practical. It's kind of like the OSCP where they basically give you two web apps in a few hours and you have to go, you know, get access, elevate your privileges, capture the flag, and they'll give you a certificate for doing that. And I have not taken the exam. I know people who have. I've, I've talked to them about it. I, I would at least interview somebody who has that. Like, I, I would say, hey, yeah, bring them in. Let's, let's talk to them about it. So uh, if you want to do this, like, that would be another thing to do. And that's all I got. I, I'm really glad that I got through a whole hour, so. Well, I think you probably could have done 10 minutes and we would have had filled the rest of the time with questions because there was a ton of questions that came. Yeah, I had, to, I had to close Discord because the, the hands were. <laughs> yeah. Um, Deb, do we want to hit some of these now? Yeah, I mean, let's, um, let's hit some of these questions. Uh, Brian actually had a, not Brian, Ryan had an actually good idea that we might do a whole nother session on, hey, these are questions from a most recent webcast. We seem to be very interested in, and then we'll just mm -hmm. uh, fire them at Craig. But we could do like a, a webcast after hours or something after, like that, where all we do is just after spend, hour. Or yeah, spend yeah. another hour talking. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, let's pick a couple. Definitely. Craig, first. Good job, buddy. My goodness. That was thank you. fantastic for your first go around. Uh, let Craig know in the chat if you appreciated and liked the content because I feel like y'all loved it. But that's thank you guys for showing up. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I'm tired. I need a nap, and I didn't do. Like yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just hit a couple of them that I feel like are very broad in nature mm -hmm. to try to narrow this down. So I'm apologizing right now if I don't get your question. Um, I think I like this one because I feel like it, it hits a lot of people. Uh, do you feel there is a greater equal or less of a need to know how to remediate vulnerabilities found on a web on, on web apps versus mainly knowing how to identify them for an application pen test? Um, I, I, ideally, you'd be able to give them advice on how to remediate it. Um, I, I don't know that it's necessary. And it's one of those things where I feel like in web apps, I have the advantage of coming from a development background. I was a software engineer for a while. I've written web apps. So I kind of have an idea of like what the, the core issue really is. But um, from a pen testing perspective, like I feel like you don't always get uh, like visibility. Like my, my perspective, I don't see the back end of this application. This is very much like, like black box, like from the outside. And I, I don't necessarily know as an attacker, like what the reason for this vulnerability is. So even if I wanted to, like, I'm not necessarily, I don't have the context of the information necessary all the time to even tell them how to fix it. So I would say, ideally, it'd be great to be able to tell them how to remediate, but like, 
you not you can't always even do that so i would say it's not necessary and kind of in that same vein and i think this one's just an interesting question i think i'm 99 percent sure i know what your answer is but how do you write a report for a web app pen test where you don't find any vulnerabilities um you document everything you did that didn't work that's that's the answer like i i, I don't think i've ever had like a, a zero finding vulnerable like i uh, yeah this report but like yeah I, i've had them where like the only thing that i had was like hey you got bad ssl protocols or something like that something that's like weak sauce but the important thing there and and bb's kind of like the uh reporting god here at black hills like go watch his talks go go watch his webcasts and stuff and, and read his blogs about how to report but sometimes that happens like you don't find a whole lot but the the trick is to like I just did, like during my reporting process, all the stuff that I walked through and like we didn't find anything, I'm documenting all the stuff that I did. Because right. if, even if you don't find anything, you can give them an idea of like the things that you did look at um, and they can at least kind of know like what bases they definitely have covered, right? And then my follow on to that is it's a maturity thing. And I've done this a couple of times for some of our customers where I have these reports for web apps where it's like, I didn't find much of anything. I spent a week or two weeks mm -hmm. on this app and I found nothing. And that at that point that's where i would maybe recommend them considering doing something more uh doing like a bug bounty instead of their in addition to, not instead of but in, in addition to their pen testing yeah. maybe consider doing that because then that, that's going to get a lot more eyes a lot more higher skill people um just the, the volume of like people banging on your stuff is going to is going to go way up and you're going to get more value out of that but i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend that out of the gate because then you're going you're going to pay out the butt for stuff that you would just find in a pen test but if you're if your application is mature enough and that's about when i would start recommending that cool um are there any tools that you would avoid using because they might be too risky besides like ddos type stuff um I don't, I don't I don't think so. No, just make sure your your scoping is configured. You don't don't go out of scope. Don't don't if you if you're worried about something knocking something over. Um web apps it, so web apps and externals and this is I, I, this is not black hills. This is just like my opinion, man. So uh, if it's on the internet, like I'm not probably going to be doing anything to it that the internet's not already doing. And if I do knock it over, in my opinion, that's like a finding, right? Like you want to know about <laughs> yeah. that. So uh, I would say I'm not I I, I try to be cautious, be, make sure you stay in scope, but like I'm not really, I'm not trying to knock stuff over, but like, if it happens, it happens. I don't really yeah, worry and, about it. So what about like the difference though, between like testing in a staging environment for like a web app or something like that? Like, cause like we have situations sometimes where it, it's maybe like an internal application that the company's developed and it's like for medical purposes and they do not want to get it knocked over on something like that. And they, they put it up in like a stage. Like, would that be something that's a little different or that? Yes. And, and that's something and we I didn't talk about that, but like, that's an important part of the, the pen testing process is that's something you want to identify. I always ask about that during the rules of engagement call. Mm -hmm. You want to know about that stuff ahead of time. Um, I always ask them, is there anything sensitive? Like, is there anything that I might do that is going to be dangerous? I, I want to ask about, you know, rate limiting, uh, stuff like that. So that was that would be something that I would ask about before I even start. And if they have anything that they're worried about, then they bring it up and then I make sure I make a very good note to like be careful. All right. What question do you have, Deb? You have uh, one? Uh, there was some chatter about the pro version, the paid pro version and the free one mm -hmm. and the differences between uh, what the stuff you were using and what's not available in, in the free one. Um, yeah. So the free one for if you're learning, uh, the free one is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's got it's got some stuff that I haven't I haven't used the community version in a while. Uh, if I remember correctly, there's stuff that's like limited, like Intruder. It, it limits the number of requests that you can make with an Intruder. So yada yada. yada. It's, it's not. Um, you can do most of the stuff you need to do to learn how to do this stuff and go through your labs and do all that. Um, it's just a little bit limited, a little bit uh, kind of kind of gimped in that way, but it's, it's totally usable for learning. If you're going to do any, any kind of like real professional, like bug bounty or, or what about pen testing though, you want you want the pro version. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not, it's not super expensive. I think it's like 400 bucks. Um, so it, there's some differences and there are free options. So, uh, OWASP zap, I, I've heard good things. I've heard they've improved it. Yep. Um, I, I wanted to, I thought about doing, I've been meaning to do like a sit down side-by-side -side comparison and like actually relearn zap and go through and do a comparison with verb suite. I might do that later. Um, but that's, th that's free. It's out there. It does a lot of the same stuff. Um, I just, I don't, I don't use it. Burp does what I need. So I use burp. So, um, one I used to recommend a while ago, and I think this is more so for like offline code review, is Swamp in a Box. Have you familiar with that one at all? Or is that even still 
current at all. <laughs> no, I've never even heard of that, man. Never Sorry. even heard of that one. Yeah, it was one of those. It was years ago when I was sitting in a, in a talk that John was giving, and he he recommended it because he worked with the team that developed it a while ago. But I don't What's know if joke? that. No, 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 no. It's it's a swamp in a box. It's you can look it up. Um, I'm actually on the GitHub about it right now, just going through because they used to not have um, a GitHub page for it. Um, but that might be a tool worth mm, taking a look. I don't. I, I I I'm not. I'm not advocating for it. By the way, I'm just. It might be worth checking out. It's something I haven't talked about with customers for a couple of years, and I was wondering if you were familiar with yep. it. So. No, no idea. And like I said, I, I said earlier, I'm, I'm very tool agnostic. I just, I, I like a burp, I prefer a burp. It, it is kind of the industry yeah. standard. So, uh, but yeah, no, no, no idea about that. Cool. We did get so many questions. Um, we, we probably will do like a whole nother session just to cover all the questions. Uh, one that I do want to ask you that was interesting to me is, can, do you have an example of a particularly challenging web app security issue that you've encountered during a pen test and how did you approach analyzing and resolving it? No, not during a pen test. I had one um, it was a bug bounty and it was a uh, shout out to Ali Ahmad over at, uh, 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 Optiv. He helped me out with it, but, um, it was, it was command injection. I found a command injection vulnerability where I was basically, that's like a big bad for a web app, right? That's, that's remote code execution. That's, that's really bad news, but because it's a web server, like it was firewalled off. So I was like trying to, I was trying to get a shell on this thing essentially, but it wasn't allowing connections out. So I couldn't, and I was like telling them, Hey, I'm, I'm writing, you know, shells to your, this directory, go look at it. And they're like, they didn't want to acknowledge that the vulnerable even existed. <laughs> and so I ended up having to do um, like out of band, um, getting command responses back in subdomains to a collaborator URI and like encoding them and like decoding them to demonstrate, Hey, yeah, no, I can read directories on this box. Um, it was, yeah, it was kind of a pain. It was really cool though when we got done with it and they did eventually pay us. So have, do you, have you ever seen like burp go off like out of, out of scope um, when you're utilizing it or creating like trash data on target systems or anything like that? Um, going out of scope, you want to configure your scope so that doesn't happen, but things can happen, especially like it, it does a lot of like any kind of like scanning and fuzzing is going to be submitting payloads. And if that actually mm -hmm. gets written, it's like a database or whatever, it's going to be reflected and it's going to be, it's going to be now stored in the application. So like that, that, that can happen. And if you do get like a successful payload, they're going to have to do some work on the, on the back end to go clean that up after the fact. Um, I haven't had any catastrophic incidents though, that I can remember. What else you got Deb? Uh, there's a lot, but they get really into the lot. weeds. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I don't well, want to do that. This is this was not that kind of talk. Please don't. Exactly, yeah. and that's yeah. and that's why I'm chitting some more higher level stuff for you mm -hmm. because I think mm -hmm. if, if we can get into the weeds, we can talk about one specific example. But I like the more general stuff with these webcasts. So yeah, for sure. Uh, what else you got, Deb? Uh, I really was gonna just kind of wrap up <laughs> because okay, yeah, we're about, we we're about 15 minutes past. Yeah, now, one so. thing I wanted to say, if you want more of Black Hills or Backdoors and Breaches or anything of the stuff that we do, uh, we just created a new expansion deck with Red Canary and they right now are having, uh, they're playing a game. So it started at two, it's a little late, but I posted a link in the chat if you wanted to go and check it out. And yeah, that's kind of all, all I had. Good job, Craig, again, like, well done. This is not the the last that we will hear of you, sir. Thank you, you guys for having me. A lot of knowledge yes. to share. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks everybody time. for showing up. I hope it was it was a good time for you too. And, and if you want someone like Craig, to do your your web app pen test you can reach out to us uh, get in line uh, get, in, get, get in line. line well especially like i will say right now if you have any work that you want done in q1 next year now would be the time to talk to us because <laughs> it's it's yeah it's pretty crazy q4 is crazy anyways yeah, so sure. um cool we're gonna plug what we actually do so yeah gonna... we do we yeah we do pen testing <laughs> we have a sock we do hey, yeah. backdoors and but breaches that, you know, you know um, where to find incident response it's like almost at this point i'm kind of like just I don't want to say we're the Walmart of like, target. you know, target. target. I could take target. I think the target of pen testing firms, but run um, it by John. Yeah. I'll Wegmans. run that one by John. Wegmans. See what, Wegmans Wegmans. Is classy. I don't even know what that is. That sounds very boutique. Oh, they don't have Wegmans um, in Arizona. You don't know. Oh, oh. You're missing out, dude. Yeah, it sounds like I am. I can't be trusted in Wegmans. I, I don't make that much. I, well, th th this I, definitely does sound like like a BHIS <laughs> version. Yeah, of things. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So, yeah. All right. I think we're done. Thank you guys for joining us for another Black Hills Information Security webcast. And we are usually here on Thursdays, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll see you next week. Kill Brian, fire. Brian's going to kill it. Kill the fire. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. No? Kill see? it. <laughs>